What's up guys, my name is Bart Komar, but more importantly, what I'm about to show you is a tragedy. It's my garage. Let's do it. So basically, this is no longer considered to be a garage, but a dumping ground for all of our extra stuff from projects, Christmas decorations, Thanksgiving, and so on. It's basically a hoarder's paradise. But don't trip, chocolate chip. We're gonna hook it up with some DIY floating shelves so that you can store all of your stuff and be able to park in the garage again. We're gonna talk about how to build these shelves, the measurements I use, the tools and materials, but more importantly, at the end of this video, we're gonna have a full cost breakdown of the entire build. So stick around, let's have some fun. Welcome to the Comar Project. To help me organize all this stuff, I picked up some commander bins. I've been using these bins for years, storing all of my army gear. They're tough, durable, and the best thing, they're 10 bucks each. I started labeling the bins with a paint pen and some gaff tape. Gaff tape is like duct tape, but doesn't leave that sticky residue. I'll leave a link to the bins and the gaff tape in the description below if you guys want to check it out. I even painted our old steel cabinet because Honey Bunny always says that I bring trash home. Now it's not trash, it looks like treasure to me. Because it's black and it's cool. Oh, check this out. This is my very first push stick. Check it out. Yeah, they've gotten better since then. You guys know what this is? <laughs> it's a freaking cone for when Thor was sick. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he does not like it. <laughs> You're the one allergic to chicken, not me. No more chicken. No more chicken. Okay? All right. You won't eat chicken anymore? No. No. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Okay, so I wasn't planning on painting this wall, but since I have everything off of it, and I have some ceiling paint left over from when we painted the crib, why not? It's going to take 10-15 minutes and it's going to make a huge impact. So, white wall, yeah. Okay, it's finally time to put up the shelving, what we're all here for, because they're floating. Yeah. No, it's because it's the easiest way of doing it, getting it off the floor. And to mount everything, we're gonna be using these two brackets. This is an inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron. It's got these very, very handy holes and a inch and three eighths flat bar. This is fairly flimsy. It has a lot of wiggle to it, but all the force is gonna be downward. So this isn't gonna go anywhere. And it also has matching holes that'll match up with this. And this angle plate is gonna be suspended from the ceiling. We only need about 12 inches of it. So we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna mount this bar to it with a bolt and our shelf is gonna be suspended. But first let's build the shelves out of some two by fours and it's gonna be fairly simple. We're gonna use a circular saw for everything here and a drill. That's all we're gonna need. I like, we're gonna need a few more tools to get this project done. A level, a stud finder, and a grinder with a cutoff wheel to cut our brackets. So I picked up 11 two by fours from my local hardware store. Just remember, when you're buying lumber from a big box store, make sure that you sort through it because most of the time, none of them are straight and it's gonna make your job a lot easier down the road. So I'm gonna be making three platforms that measure 63 by 31 inches to hold three bins each. We're gonna be stacking our bins. This way it's gonna maximize that platform and allow us to get 18 bins on the entire stretch. To make the platforms, you want to cut six of the 11 2x4s into 63 by 31 pieces. This is going to be the outside of the frame for the platform. Next I took three 2x4s and cut three pieces, each measuring 28 inches. This will be the cross braces for the platform. After all the cuts are made, you should have 21 pieces in three different measurements. Next it's time to start laying out the forms that will make up the frame for the shelves. I make marks every 16 inches and mark an X. This is where the cross braces will be. Then I place the center supports inside the frame where the X is and started screwing them together. I use two three inch screws per connection 
I'm basically building a wall and going to be using it sideways. You can always use glue, but we're still gonna be attaching the plywood to this frame, so this should be plenty strong. After the frames were done, I took three sheets of half inch OSB and cut three pieces 63 by 31 to cover the frames and create the actual shelves. I use OSB because it's much lighter than plywood, it's very strong, and it's inexpensive at about 10 bucks a sheet. Then I painted the frames and the OSB with the cheapest black paint I can find. Now remember those two 2x4s that are left over from the original buy? Well, these will act as supports for the brackets. It's going to distribute the load over a 16 foot span and not put too much pressure on any specific joist. Then I placed the 30 inches from the wall and then Honey Bunny hold it with a level while I drove in the screws. It's just much easier with a helper. Unless that helper thinks that the level is actually a lightsaber. Hold on, I'm trying to balance all this stuff. It's a babe? All right, babe. Call you when I need you. Okay, I'm gonna go for a run. You gonna run your jeans? No, Better hurry up, make that run quick. Six minute mile. <laughs> Six minute mile. The funny thing about that is she could probably do it. The last time I did a six minute mile, I don't think I ever did a six minute mile. But getting back to the build, I cut the angle brackets into 16 inch pieces and bolted them to the two by fours using two inch long, three eighths lag screws. I did four screws per bracket. While Honey Bunny held the back of the form with her lightsaber, I was able to go around and screw it in using three inch screws and use one and a half inch lag bolts to secure the flat bar to the frame. Beautiful. 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 Should we test Beautiful. it? Beautiful. Okay, this is the test that it's strong enough. It'll do better. Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> I gotcha. Oh, you're so tough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> After the Colmar weigh-in test, we did the same thing for the second and third platform, screwing them all the way around to the walls. Now the only thing that's left to do is screw down the OSB sheathing and do the real test. With that rescue, I earned a lot of man points with Honey Bunny. Guys, remember, you always have to impress your woman, especially if she's way out of your league, like in my case. I went on Amazon and found this bike rack for 60 bucks. It's perfect to hold five bikes and a couple of helmets. It gets it off the ground for us, but it still allows the kids to access their bikes very easily. So with that, I think we're done. there you go guys, the floating garage shelves are finally done and we can actually park in this garage. The total length of the platform is 16 feet and it will hold eight bins there and I can stack two on top of each other, which gives me 18. That's a whole lot of storage that we normally wouldn't have. And the best thing about building something like this is you can build it any size you want to fit your garage or the bins that you're using. So the possibilities are endless. So now let's talk about the cost of this entire build. Okay, breaking it down, we had 11 two by four by eights, and that was 30 bucks. Three sheets of half inch OSB, another 30 bucks. Two angle brackets, 14 bucks. Six slotted flat bars, 42 bucks. 
a gallon of cheap paint for 20 bucks and the bolt screws and miscellaneous like washers, things like that. I put that in at 30 bucks because you probably have that stuff laying around and you might not have to purchase it. So that's just a rounded number. And that brings the grand total to 166 bucks. So you can totally knock this out for under 200 bucks and do it in a day. And if you're interested, I'm gonna have a link to all the tools and materials that I used on this build. And maybe that'll help you out. If you picked up some useful information out of this build or just enjoyed watching the video, I'd love it if you considered subscribing. Your guys' support means the world to me and lets me build fun stuff like this and useful stuff like this. Thank you so much for joining me in this experience. I'll see you guys next time.